official. The V Network mobile app from the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Search the V Network TV for iPhones and the V Network for Android phones. Receive notifications on upcoming shows, events, and network giveaways. Download it today. Don't be the last to find out what's going on on your favorite network, the V Network. With the increased demand for digital content, you can't be everywhere, but your business can. VSC Media specializes in creating informational interviews and marketing videos for business websites and social media platforms. We believe that every business is different, so our approach to creating professional quality videos is different. VSC Media, turning digital content into growth solutions. Hi everyone, I'm Tiffany Davis Edwards, fitness instructor, personal trainer, and the owner and operator of Tiffany Enterprises, where our focus is all things beauty and fitness. Please check me out on social media, but most definitely check me out on the V Network. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, this is Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd, but you can call me Dr. Tiff. I am the host of Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. My show unpacks societal issues aligning with the teachings of Christ. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Make sure that you download Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff podcast on all platforms. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, and welcome to Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. I am your host, Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in from around the world. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out with me on this glorious, beautiful Saturday afternoon. You could have been doing anything, but please know that I appreciate you from the bottom and top of my heart. If you're tuning in on the V Network TV, hello to you. If you're watching me on Facebook Live, hello to you. And please type in the comment section where you are watching me from. Thank you so much. If you're watching me on YouTube, hello to you. Please type in the comment section where you're watching me from on YouTube. Make sure that you follow me on Facebook at Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Tiffany.M.Lloyd. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. We have an amazing show today, but before we do anything, you know what we do. We always start with a word of prayer. God, thank you. That's what's in my spirit right now to say thank you. You are a great God. You are a merciful God. There is no God like you. So God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this another golden opportunity to praise your name. God, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We magnify you. Thank you for Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. Take Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff to a level like only you can. Thank you, God, for every viewer, for every listener, for every subscriber, for every streamer, God. I'm so grateful. Bless them in a mighty way. Bless the V Network TV, God. Enlarge its territory in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless my producer, Kevin, God. Enlarge his territory. Continue to open doors for him in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let this show be a blessing to your people. Let this interview inspire and let someone come running and saying, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all of the glory. We ask these blessings in your son Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, my interview. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. I have with me my brother, attorney Chris LaCour. Um, my friend, let's get straight to it. Um, we know that uh, a lot of people are trying to censor rap songs. Uh, talk to us about that. Uh, well, recently in the news, uh, 
they've been trying to pass laws in different states to be able to use uh, rap lyrics against artists in criminal cases. I think uh, if you follow rap, you know, right now, one of the big criminal cases is uh, Young Thug and Gunner. Uh, apparently, they were running a street game out in Atlanta, and uh, prosecutors want to use their lyrics against them at trial. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, there was pushback on that from people like Stacey Abrams and stuff, which I don't think you should be able to use someone's music against them at trial. But on the same breath, how about stop rapping about crimes you're committing? Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It, it just sounds like we, we're fighting for our people. I get it. But it sounds like a pointless fight. How about don't rap about crimes you commit? Are you dead? not talented where you have to commit crimes to be able to have content to rap about. And honestly, that's what, that's where hip hop is with some of these artists, especially with these young kids that I'm representing. A lot of them will commit a crime and make a rap song about it and put it on Instagram. And I was, I shot up Trey Mama house. Well, like you confessing. It's, a, it's, no different. <laughs> it's no different than telling the confessing to the cops. Right. I mean, like, almost feel like we got to pick our battles as a people. This is not one we should be having to fight. How about don't rap about your crimes? Mm -hmm. Simple. Or, I mean, or be cryptic about it where they can't put two and two together. Oh, he was talking about the murder that occurred here in this song. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not rocket science not to tell on yourself. Like, don't right. tell yourself. I I don't get. It. I think we got bigger fish to fry. We got bigger problems in the black community than having to remind young people. Don't tell on yourself. Like literally, when the cops arrest you, they tell you you can stay silent. And people mm -hmm. ignore that. Uh, you know, I was in court and I was talking to a detective and a prosecutor, and we we were all just kind of laughing amongst ourselves how. People will tell the cops everything. Mm -hmm. And then when the when they defense lawyer get the lie, they lie mm -hmm. to their lawyer. Mm -hmm. And they tell you, are you working for them? Who? Because you you already talked to them. Why won't you talk to me? <laughs> it's comical, man. It's comical. But I, I just I feel like we got bigger problems in the black community than having to remind young people, like, don't be a fool. Like, right. I don't, I don't, right. I don't know. Let yeah. me ask you this: What do you say to those people that say, "Well, is that infringing on someone's uh, freedom of speech?" And can you explain that? Do we really have freedom of speech here uh, in America? I, I mean, we do, in a sense. There's certain, but there's just certain things you can't do. Like hate speech is protected, but you can't go into a theater and yell fire. Right. And you might cause a riot and people get hurt. So, you know, but uh, musically, I mean, most people say as an artist, I should be able to express myself without retribution. But once again, I mean, if I make a whole song about how I robbed a bank, a bank that I actually robbed, what do I expect? Mm -hmm. Come on. I I'll just... I don't know. I feel like there's a little disconnect there. Like, hey, stop rapping about your crimes. Or, uh, I don't know, write better, write better lyrics. So we're not able to figure out what you're talking about. It's so cryptic. Guy. It could have two or three meanings. What mm -hmm. they say, double entendre. It should have meaning on top of meaning. That way, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, exactly. you know, get a, little more get a little more creative. Work on your craft. So what do you say to those people that say that their art is their reality, that they rap about what they see when they look in their backyard? This is what they see is crime. You know, what do you say to those that's like, OK, rapping is like um, my verbal diary, you know, instead of, you know, I'm writing it out and I'm speaking it out. What do you say to that? But nobody wants anybody to read their actual diary. Who who you know wants to <laughs> share their diary? No. I mean, look, if you're telling me that you saw Ray Ray kill Lil Pooh in the streets, that ain't got nothing to do with you. I get that. 
But if you if you're rapping specifically about something you did, and I can clearly tell you just submitted to a crime <laughs> that everybody in the neighborhood know about. Like, come on, man. I, I they're gonna cook the not me as a fan, I'm saying the authorities, law enforcement, prosecutors. Mm -hmm. Like, why are you gonna give them ammunition? Like I said, that's no different than not not using your right to remain silent. What do you expect if you talk to the police? Their only job is to arrest you. They're not your friend. They don't want to talk to you. They can lie to get the truth. All right, come on, man. I, I just need people to be smarter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, it does seem like, and this, this doesn't go for all artists. There are some artists where, you know, they're artists just about murder and, and sex. And it's like nothing else. When you hear certain artists, it's almost like you're, it's, it's very predictable what they're going to talk about. Either this artist is going to talk about sex or this artist is going to talk about murder. And I agree with you. You know, we need to have more clever ways of conveying, you know, the art of expression. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm seeing more people, attorney LaCour come out in their fifties now saying that they want to be a rapper, you know, people, <laughs> no, 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 no. People that have been doing it. I even know people, I have a student that is like six, almost 60 and was like, that was always his passion to be a rapper. What do you say to, to those people who say, you know what? Rap is my passion. You know, that's that's something that I want to make a career out of. What do you say to that? I mean, I'm not. I, music is music. You can make music at any age, but I I would pray that a 60 year old isn't talking about selling dope. I mean, if you selling dope <laughs> and you in your 60s, something's wrong, man. <laughs> something's wrong. I'm sorry. You know, uh. I mean, what would most 60 year olds rap about? Their grandchildren, I guess, uh, living life, hobbies, uh, enjoying the older years. I, I don't know, but something that I could connect to. I mean, I love rap. I grew up on rap. I've been listening to it all my life. At this age now, though, there's a little disconnect with me because I, I'm, I don't go to clubs anymore. I don't do the things that they talk about in rap songs. I've never murdered anybody. I grew up in a hard life. Everybody, I think most people experience that, you know, uh, not having much, family sticking together, stuff like that. But I mean, I'm in a different place in my life. I'm, I'm doing different things. I'm not poor anymore. Mm -hmm. Not wealthy, but not poor. I understand that struggle, but I don't want to hear about that all the time. I I really don't want to hear about nobody getting murdered. I, I every case I got is a murder case. Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I would prefer not to hear about murder. So I find it hard to listen to rap right now. I'm, I'm mostly listening to the older stuff, but I just, you know, come on, man. I, I'm just, I'm just saying, it's the way you do things. Uh, when what do you say? When I was a child, I, I, I had child, child. things. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not a child no more. I had to pull away child things. Charge things. That's right. You know, That's right. Okay. So, hey, man, I'm just saying you you grow as you get older. Yeah. And maybe, when we maybe. get older, some things have to change. Our conversations have to change. Who we move with sometimes have to change. You know, our actions have to change. You know, the things that, you know, you and I are on the same age, you know, the things that we did in our 20s, you know, at Southern uh, 30s, you know, we don't do anymore. But it's sad, you know, and I think you can you can look at this too. You know, when I look back and I go on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, and I see people that I grew up with, and they're still about the same conversations, the same trivial things, the same drama, same gossip, same mess. And then it's like, I, I want to just tell them sometime, this is why you're not progressing much because you're on these, these childish things. But let's move on. With the overturning of Roe versus Wade, does states' constitution with the right to privacy in them actually give more protection to women and the anti-abortion laws in those states? Are they maybe in violation? Oh yeah, man. I, I'm, and I, I think I don't know. I think I think this evangelical conservative movement and politics, which I don't know why they call it evangelical. I. I I find it hard to believe that as a Christian, uh, my main goal is to dictate politics or 
what's happening with the state or, you know, I or force my beliefs into the political system whereby everybody got to live by my morals and standards. I don't know. I, I truly believe in free will. He mm-hmm. gave it all to us and we all sit on judgment by yourself. So, uh, you know, Louisiana in its state constitution literally says you have a right to privacy. Most state, a lot of the state constitutions have that right. The constitution of the United States doesn't say that specifically. It's a right that I guess has been implied through the courts in which the, the, um, the, the, the judgment on Roe v. Wade was kind of based on your right to privacy, your right to be able to make a decision with your health care provider that nobody should be able to intrude on, right? Mm-hmm. And so now you got the United States Supreme Court, which is just a joke now, overturning Roe v. Wade and these uh, trigger laws automatically coming into effect, but the protection that the U.S. Uh, Supreme Court got rid of, it's actually in the state's constitutions. Mm-hmm. Believe me, a, a case is coming. It's coming. as Because, you know, in Louisiana, they had a judgment blocking the trigger laws until uh, it was a case in Baton Rouge that's being decided. And uh, they, they took an appeal to let the law go into effect while the case is being decided. I think Judge Johnson down in the 19th is uh, hearing that case. But, I mean, just yesterday, Ben Crump and the lady was on the state capitol in Louisiana, her talking about how she couldn't get an abortion because <clears throat> her child has a condition where when the child is born, the child's going to die automatically. And, like, within minutes, the doctor's told her. Mm-hmm. child hasn't developed a cranium. Uh, and the hospital basically told this lady, you got the birth to bury the child. That's crazy. What? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I I don't know anybody who uh, uh, calls themselves a Christian would think that would be okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying an abortion is okay. I'm saying to force that woman to do that. Hey, if she got to make a hard decision, that should be between her, her doctor, and God ultimately. Because that's who she's going to have to answer to for. I don't, and I don't know what God's decision on that gonna be. I, I, unfortunately, our Bible, a lot of the things that we say people shouldn't be doing, it's not in the Bible. Yeah, abortions aren't in the Bible. The Bible doesn't say abortions are against my word. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it needs to say that. I'm just saying it doesn't say that. And God said we all have free will to make our decisions of whether we're gonna follow Him or not. So how are we going to decide this for this lady, man? Forcing her to do that? I don't think that's right either. Right. And that's about to happen a lot across. A, a, a child having her father rapes her and she's forced to have her father's child? Incest, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not saying she should have the right to abort that child, but Jesus Christ, Father, help me. Mm-hmm. Mm. All, all that story about the 10-year-old who had to go to one state to get it because she had been raped repeatedly. I, 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 I don't know what the right answer is, okay? And I know that our uh, Vera base here, I'm talking to Christians right now. These are hard questions we got to ask ourselves and ask God. Absolutely. I don't know the answer and I'm not trying to tell nobody what the answer is. I just, wow. And, you know, these, just like with uh, the governor in Florida who hurry up and pass the law to try to uh, take Disney's right to run their property the way they want. And then realize that the taxpayers was going to be caught with millions and millions of dollars of, 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 of debt. It's kind of sound like, what? Y'all hurry up, make you didn't think about what I, I have a right to privacy in the week in my medical decisions. I'm just saying. Right, right. That's so, very sad, you know. And the right to privacy means the right to be left alone, right? <laughs> you know. To, the, to do what it is that you want to do. So I'm just 
I don't know, man. What? But Dr. Tiffany, is anything they doing making any sense anymore? Like, we all know Trump has broken the law. God knows. He's a he admits to it on TV. Yeah, we still, every day on the news, they questioning whether he's going to be indicted. Like, oh, God, give me a break. Like, no. you know, everyday people are being brought to court, rung up on charges, arrested, indicted, convicted, in prison. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Who cares who Donald Trump is? But they say nobody's above the law. And they wonder why, you know, people are protesting, saying defund the police. Because when you get stuff like that, uh, you know. Yeah, it's questionable if it really is. So speaking of the law, the grand jury decided not to indict Carolyn Bryant, the woman in responsible for Emmett Till's uh, death. And some people say, well, she didn't kill him. Well, she basically did when she lied on him, you know, especially back in that time. Uh, what are your yeah. thoughts on them not pursuing uh, an indictment on her? Uh, you know, it just highlights once again uh, how the white woman in this country is put on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate. I mean, she had a child killed. It's, it should be no, it should be no time frame on that for them to prosecute her. She basically conspired in this murder. What's the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, I got a case right now, a cold case, 17 years old. Uh, a young white lady was murdered. And man, they have opened and reopened this case three times in the past 17 years. And now they trying to prosecute my client. Nobody saw her with him. They don't got no DNA. They don't have a confession. Uh, and I'll make you laugh. So there was some DNA unable to be tested 17 years ago. Mm -hmm. I guess finally now can't be tested. I guess testing standards have improved. Mm -hmm. And they say whoever they left that DNA on the trunk of that car is the same person who removed her body out the trunk of the car. Mm -hmm. So we waiting and we waiting. All the DNA here. And I'm like, oh, I'm on pins and needles. And my client is a white guy. About 5'8". Um, average height, average build. Look mm -hmm. like an average Caucasian male. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the DNA come back from like a, a black guy. Who was because after I did it for a criminal defendant so he's never probably ever coming back to court or jail and they say <laughs> we're trying to find a connection between them two now what now they're trying wow. to find a connection between them two and so I asked my client I say do you know this guy he said man I've never seen that man a day in my life but to, to prove a murder for this young white lady we, we're gonna go to the ends of the earth what yeah man it's ridiculous I always said that, you know, I wonder, I already know the answer, if the roles were reversed, if em if Emmett had survived and Emmett was, um, had in their eyes committed a crime, would Emmett have gotten off? Would Emmett have been exonerated? And of course, we know the answer to that. It's, it's just like there was no regard for Emmett. And I watched the ABC special. I think it was like a three week special. They were showing um, this this movie on ABC um, oh, yeah. about Emmett. You remember the guy on a different world, uh, Colonel Taylor, uh, Glenn yeah. uh, Terman. He played Emmett's uh, uncle where Emmett had played for. And um, it was such a very touching movie. And it, it really, really brought back to life the case and 14 years old you're still a you're a baby and she lied on him, you know and I, I wonder to this day she's still alive I wonder does she live with that does that haunt her every day of her life uh, she doing it free <laughs> so what do it matter what's haunting her? she's sitting home free yeah um, you know it's, it's just horrible man I, I'm hey man we just got out the cotton fields. I had to keep reminding people this. 
We we barely removed, Dr. Tiffany. I'm two generations out of the cotton field. You won. Hey, and, and my mama came this close to picking cotton. Y'all better wake up out there. Yeah. yeah. I'm that, you know what? I didn't even think about that. I'm one generation removed from picking cotton because my mother picked cotton. That's that's very true. Now keep in the spirit of judges, former judges uh that send kids to jail for kickbacks must pay more than two hundred million dollars. Shed some light on that. Uh, God is good and God is good all the time. If you mm -hmm. remember from my first show, I mentioned that case, but I couldn't remember the name of it. But as we discussed doing this show, look what popped up. Oh, man. And, I, and that's why I say we have to get private industry out of corrections. That's a problem. A, a for-profit business, they're not going to care about rehabilitating any inmate. They don't, that's not their concern. Their concern is the field beds. Most facilities now you go to, there are nothing there for the inmates. No programs, no mm -hmm. uh, technical skills they can learn so they can come out and try to get a job. And we got to do something about using felonies against people, okay? But in that situation specifically, they did it to children. Yeah. Shackling eight-year-old children. Sending eight year old children for to juvenile life because they shoplifted or got caught smoking or truancy, not going to school, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. the, more than likely, those victims are never going to see that two hundred million dollars because mm -hmm. one of them in prison and the other one's home, but they in their seventies and eighties, mm -hmm. never going to see that money. Now they may, they may. The, the, somehow, some way, they may freeze some assets and get something. But man, them children lost their childhood for little mm -hmm. things. I've even did. I remember as a child, I took a, a little comic book out the store. And my mama caught me, and you know she threatened me with the beating of a life, and I never did it again. Mm -hmm. So, what little kid hasn't reached for a piece of candy and just put it in their pocket? You go into a store with a toddler, you better watch him. He got sticky fingers. I'm just yeah. saying. And yes. they were, they were for simple offenses, simple things that these children could have got some counseling for, or maybe a little reprimand, or made to do some community service, something to teach them to do better. Mm -hmm. They lock these kids up, but it's happening to adults too. Mm -hmm. It just highlights the problem with the system as a whole. If you're sitting there thinking that there aren't some judge getting kickbacks from private of uh industries that have facilities telling them give them long sentences make sure you keep these beds full we're gonna take care of you mm -hmm. there's some judge doing it somewhere mm -hmm. mm -hmm. even though we would hold, like to think that they upholding the oath of the office and mm -hmm. you know, being fair and impartial you know somewhere some somewhere somebody's corrupt and it's unfortunate it's gonna happen again and again we have to get pride private industry out of the prison system back into the hands of the government because that's who should be running these facilities because that's who putting them in jail it's the state right it's not these industries it's the state right right in jail that's who should maintain the constitution literally says prisoners are property slaves so we basically slaving our people to private industries who not yeah. even paying for them we paying them to take our slaves <laughs> that's 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 a really good analogy um let's talk about love you know these three things the greatest of these is love we don't really show love to people anymore we don't show compassion to people anymore and you know some of the things that i hear people say to each other you know, one minute you say you love a person, but then some of the things, you know how you, you, for example, you may see a couple and they say, I love you so much. But then in the heat of the moment, one of those individuals will say something that will just hit below the belt, you know, and people say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words don't hurt. That is a lie. Hey. words cut the Bible says that our tongue is the most powerful, deadliest part of our body because the words have power you, you there's life and death and the power of the tongue and i didn't understand that you know when i was really young 
But that is so true. Words have the power to speak life and words have the power to cut you deep. Can you talk about love? Oh, man. I, without it, we, we, we're nothing. Mm. We're nothing. I, I'm, you know, I'm only able to do the job I do because of my love for other people. Right? I, I Public defender work is hard work, man. And you deal with a lot of different personalities. And even on my lowest day, like yesterday, mm, I was in a weird place about my job. I was just like, oh, whatever. You know, I was at the courthouse filing stuff. The judge saw me. Why are your face so long? I'm like, these people. <laughs> <laughs> but by the end of the day, I saw a video where uh, a cop pulled a gun on a pregnant lady and her three children. It was just in the news about a week ago. She decided not to stop immediately because they were on a dark country road. She wanted to get to a well-lit area, put her flashing lights on, and wait until she got to the gas station pulled over. He put his gun on her. It was just a horrible situation. And then it reminded me why I do what I do. It's because I love people. And I don't like to see people treated bad or, or mishandled. And, I'm, and it kind of reinvigorated me. I was like, all right, I know what I got to do. Like I'm preparing for a trial now, but if I didn't have that love for what I do and the love I have for people, I couldn't do it. Love, what they say, covers a multitude of sin. Yeah, we we need it, and it it's the greatest of all the gifts. As much as I love faith, I love faith because I can have faith, and by the end of the week, ten thousand dollars will walk through my door. Messing around with faith, mm. but you can also lose faith, and you can lose that hope. You can lose. Yesterday, I didn't have any hope. Okay. Mm. I had lost hope about the job. I was like, why am I doing this? I could go get a cushy corporate job, you know, make my life easy. But the love I have for people at the end of the day brought me back. See what I'm saying? The love my mother had to get up and ride a bike clear across town. Well, first she started walking to get to the job. And then my uncle, her brother-in-law, gave her a bike. So she rode a bike. And then before you know it, she had a car. Mm. Yeah. For the love of her children, she got up every morning at 3 a.m. to get across town. Now, it's only about two or three miles, but she walking. So she got to get up an extra two, three hours and get there. And in the rain, when she get to the nursing home, she got to go into the washroom and take her suit off and dry it off in the dryer because she didn't to make sure we had a place to live. Love is my grandparents allowing every time any of their children didn't have a place to stay to move back in with their children. Sometimes mm -hmm. it'd be three, four families mm -hmm. in the house at one time. Son, I'm on the, I'm on the interview, son. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, but love, love is me not getting up and spanking that <laughs> <laughs> That's love. I told him. them not to come through this. <laughs> I told them not to come through here. But they don't listen, I do that. Anyway, <laughs> love is a beautiful thing, and without it, we're nothing. You know, uh I, I can I can have a I can be a real mean person, unfortunately, but without love, I wouldn't do what I do. Mm -hmm. And uh I, I I joke with my wife because I tell her, I mean, you wouldn't like me if I was really as serious as I really am. I, I purposely pretend to be laid back. But if I was like who I really wanted to be, I'd be like, you couldn't. I'm super serious, super, super serious. But it's love that allows me to break just a little, just mm -hmm. a little. Because I, you know, uh, without yes. it, man, we'll... we'll Come on, Dr. Tiffany. What yeah, and we have to be intentional with our words. We got to be careful with our words. And I've I've learned that when you're angry, when you're emotional, when, you know, just because someone else goes below the belt, you don't have to go below the belt. And now, it is hard because we are human. But I tell people, when you do that, you're just like them. You know, uh, uh, you ain't got to go toe to toe. You ain't got to do the name calling because most people that act a fool like that, and this is no shade and nobody, but most people that go gutter like that don't have a whole lot of stuff to lose. They no. don't. 
No, they don't. But I will tell you this. I, I will have to slightly disagree with you. The uh, lawyer in me sometimes, I can't let them get away sometimes. And oh, I have absolutely. To, I, have to, I have to battle with it. But I do agree with you. You know, the worst thing you can do is to speak in your emotional state. Mm -hmm. and, I, and sometimes I can be too passionate. And so, like, just to relate that back to love, it, it's love that allowed me, last night, I wanted to cuss the door dash drive out so bad. My fool was an hour and a half late. But it was love that I talked to him in a calm voice. Normally, Dr. Tiffany, I would have went irate. And I don't like to get there because of the energy it takes and how it drains you. And the negativity it brings on you. Mm -hmm. But in love, I said, man, you know, okay, this, that. I didn't cuss him out. I said, you know what? I hung up the phone. And I canceled my order. Mm -hmm. I said, that's how you solve that problem. You don't allow yourself to go to a place. And sometimes the clients take me there. And out, right after, I'd be like, why did I let them people bring me to that point? Mm -hmm. I should never, you should never let yourself get there. Mm -hmm. Give them when they give you that 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 negativity, you're supposed to give them love back, but every now and then the devil creep up in there. You. It does. And sometimes, too, um, the devil knows our, our weaknesses and he knows our triggers. And sometimes the devil can creep in, like you just said. And sometimes we can blow up on stuff that ain't even that deep. You know, it's it's yeah. and then you think about it after you did it, like, why did I do that? Why did Why I say did that? I? You know, because I've done that before. And then a couple of days later, you sit back and, you know, when you really, you know, everything is quiet and you think about it, you're like, that wasn't even necessary. I would, you That's know, nice. some, right. Right. And sometimes when you're having conversations with people, you know, I learned, I don't even have conversations anymore when people, when they are just dominating the conversation and they're trying to over talk you, listen, I'm not about to damage my vocal box. You know, you know, you want to talk loud, get ignorant, irate, listen, you know, that's you, you know, making your blood pressure go up. I'm, I'm not about to do that. When you're in a healthy space, certain conversations you just don't engage in anymore, certain words don't even bother you anymore. Certain things that people say, whatever you want to do, because at the end of the day, you have to give an account for God for that. We got five minutes and I want to talk about life is full of ups and downs, even for Christians. And some people don't grasp that concept. Can you take the next four minutes to just shed some light on that? I, I, I want to give you a, ver a verse that, you know, every day I get up and I always look at a daily verse that that comes on this Bible app I have on my phone. And sometimes it'd be right what I need to hear. Um, and, uh, for therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Labor and reproach. Well, we know what labor is. Work. Mm -hmm. Ain't easy. Being a Christian ain't easy. Mm. Reproach. We know what reproach is. Somebody looking upon you with disgust, disdain, rebuke. You know, of course, we know a lot of the early Christians were persecuted, but labor and reproach. But it's all throughout the Bible that, you know, as a Christian, there's going to be suffering. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's a thin line because, you, you know, social media, everybody uh, don't want nothing around me negative and all this and I have to remind people, think on the flip side of that. I'm I'm a you're my friend. I'm having one of those bad negative days. I might just need to get something off my chest. I'm not even looking for you to give me any advice. You I just need a kind listening need. Maybe I've prayed to God, but I want to talk to my friend. You gonna hang up on me because I'm it is negative, but I just need that ear. I need to get this off my chest. I just want people to know it's a fine line between. A person who's just negative and a person who's going through something because we mm -hmm. all going to go through. Yes. And that's what, in my mind, that defines who you are, how you deal with the trouble, not with the good times. I love good times. Everybody do. It's not, that's not what makes you who you are. We're going to have labels. We're going to, my mother could touch heaven. There'd be times she couldn't pay the rent. I'd see her get on her knees. We get an intercessory prayer. 
and she make us all get down with us. We don't even know what's going on. I was later somebody knocking at the door with the rent money. Wow. Okay. Mm. Right there. A God told me to bring you this. Okay. So it's gonna be hard time. And mm. I mean, she could touch heaven, but it'd be a lot of times she couldn't, she could she didn't have enough to pay the bill. Didn't know where the bill money was come from. You know, she do pray. My mother lived by. I tell people this story. I hope it inspires somebody. Six years by faith, no job, no nothing. Getting a child, the only money we had coming in was a child support check that when she put my father up for child support, it was such a long time ago, it was $125 for three children. And she never went to change it as time went on. So that's all. He, he would bring her extra money, but that was it. And we were getting food stamps. And my mama would pay the bills by praying. Now, how many people you know would willingly quit their job to only focus on their life in Christ? And, and when she told me that, I thought she was crazy. Because I was a child. I was like, what is wrong with you? You got to work. How else we going to eat? She, six years. At some point, I didn't even notice that my mama didn't work a job. All she did was go around and evangelize and pray. That was it. Didn't do nothing else. But she, even though as much as a woman of God she was, we had all our time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But her son's a mechanic. I mean, uh, one son's a mechanic. One son's a lawyer. My sister is the best cosmetologist in Alexandria, Louisiana, period. Mm. What's your sister's name? What's her salon? Ebony LaCour. She works at Studio 28 West here in Alexandria, Louisiana on Coliseum Boulevard. If, if you don't know it, I'm older than her, but everybody knows it. If you don't know her, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I'll see people on local TV that do the local news and I'll be like, it'd be inappropriate, but I want to call and give them my sister number. Like, you need to call her. <laughs> I need to call her right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just to touch back on it, I just need people to understand. Believe me, I get it. There are some people who just, they come around, they just have a negative cloud around them. And sure, I get that. Well, you don't want to be around that because you tend to become what you're around. But be careful because everybody goes through something. Everybody needs a listening ear every now and then. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you are part of the Jesus and Justice family. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be seeing him more and more and more often. Um, you know, people always uh, request you. People always write in and say that you are very real. Um, and so we appreciate that. So we're going to be don't don't even worry about it. We're going to be seeing him more in the next few weeks. So, my brother, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Tiffany. OK, have a good one. All right. Bye bye. Wow, thank you so much from the bottom and top of my heart. That was wonderful. What do you think? Please type in the comment section if you're on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook. What are your thoughts? If you're on the V Network TV, you're streaming on Facebook. What are your thoughts about it? I had an amazing time. That was such a blessing. Thank you so much from the bottom and top of my heart. Listen, I want to talk to you today about worrying worrying, worrying. We've all been guilty of worrying. It's a little bit cliche. People say, if you're going to worry, why pray? If you're going to pray, why worry? But sometimes it's so easier said than done when our backs are up against the wall. But we have to have faith in knowing that the God that has brought us out of situations before is the same God that will bring us out now. And so sometimes we can put ourselves in situations. Yes, that's true. But listen, I want you to be reminded of what the Bible tells us. It says, look of the bird, look at the birds of the air. They don't worry about what they will eat or what they will drink. And if our lives are more valuable than the birds of the air, then why should we worry about what we will eat or what we will drink? Why should we worry about our life? Because our life is in God's hands. Listen, I know that it is easier said than done. But I promise you, 
What I love about God is that God is a consistent God. He's not a wishy-washy God like you and I, right? Because as human beings, our emotions can be up and down. We're, we're, we're one way this minute and we're the next minute. We're, we're another way the next minute. But we serve a God who's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I promise you, if you're praying about it, then God is working on it. That's the hope that we have. That should be a, that that should make you shout right there that if you're praying about it, God is working on it. But here's the thing about praying. Sometimes when we pray, sometimes people can try to manipulate the situation. No, that's not what it is. It's that sometimes we can pray about it, then we try to go and fix it ourselves, and then we make a mess, and then we still have to wait on God to get us out of what we have been praying for him to deliver us from. You got to completely take your hands off of it and have faith that God is going to work it out. Hebrews reminds us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. I may not see it. I may not understand how this thing is going to work out, but I got to trust God is going to make a way. God is the person that can make a way out of no way. God can open doors that man has shut in your face. God can say yes when so many people have said no. God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. God will put you places where people say that you don't even qualify from. That's just the type of God that we serve. You ought to give God some praise right there. If you're going to pray, why worry? And if you're going to worry, why pray? When I look back over my life, and it seems, it sounds a little cliche, but when I literally look back over my life and think about how I got out of some situations, how I made it, when it looked like on paper, I don't see how I'm going to get out of this. I don't see how this is possible. But some way, somehow, God made a way for me and if God can make a way for me he can make a way for you too when people say that it was impossible look at the woman who had the issue of blood for 12 long years she said if I can just touch the hem of your garment then I shall be made whole Jesus turned around and he said who touched me and she looked at him and she said, it was me. And he healed her right then. Think about it. For 12 long years, she had, a, she had an issue of blood. For 12 long years. To some people that may say, well, if you ain't been healed in 12 years, it's not possible. But look at what Jesus did. He healed her. Look at Lazarus. They thought Lazarus was, 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 was out of there. Lazarus was in the tomb for four days. And Jesus came. He said, Lazarus, come out. He said, loose them and let them go. Look at Jesus fed 5,000, two fish and five loaves of bread. On paper, people may say, how is that humanly possible for 5,000 people to have food and some food left over with two fish and five loaves of bread? Don't tell me what God can't do. When you look back over your life, the doctor may have given you one report and then you went back and the doctor said, it's a miracle. Some people, the doctor, I know somebody, the doctor said that they had cancer and when they went back, they didn't see it anymore. Listen, don't ever underestimate the power of prayer. Don't ever underestimate the power of God. You got to believe what you're saying and you got to trust him and you got to leave it there and got to trust that he's going to make a way out of no way. But even if God doesn't give you what you want, you still owe him your praise. You still owe him everything because that's, that's what it is. God doesn't owe us anything. We owe him everything. So don't you pray. Don't you worry. You got to know that God is working it out on your behalf. Now, if this has been a blessing to you, I want you to donate via cash app at dollar sign. Jesus and justice, if the Lord puts it on your heart, make sure that you follow me on Facebook at Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd. Make sure that you follow me on Instagram at Tiffany.M.Lloyd. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. Make sure that you follow the V Network TV. That's right, the V Network TV. And Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff has its own podcast. Make sure that you listen to Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. Signing out, I'm Dr. Tiff. May God bless you. It's my prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, hi, this is Dr. Tiffany M. Lloyd, but you can call me Dr. Tiff. I am the host of Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff. My show unpacks societal issues aligning with the teachings of Christ. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 
Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Make sure that you download Jesus and Justice with Dr. Tiff podcast on all platforms.